do some preventative maintenance today, but <clears throat> this time it's not so much preventative. It's more of a... I goofed, and I'm trying to ungoof my goof. So yeah, we have the turbo on the truck, and it's running great, but the transmission started slipping. Uh, pretty much anything after 50% throttle, it kills, it just revs. It doesn't really rev, it just doesn't take the power, it just, yeah. So, <clears throat> we're going to flush the trans, put a new filter in it, and adjust our line pressure, and adjust the bands. I have a lot of people tell me that if we adjust the line pressure up, <clears throat> that should solve our problem. Um, I should have adjusted the line pressure a long time ago, but I'm lazy, and nobody likes to uh, lay in transmission fluid all day. But... <sighs> We're going to do it. Also, we got most of our gauges installed. We had one gauge come in today. Our fuel pressure gauge came in today, so that has to be put in. I don't know if I'll get to that today or not. But if we do, I'll go over it. We put a digital RPM gauge in the truck, and we wired it in to the factory plug inside the truck. I will do a write-up on this or make a video on it on a separate day um, because I know a lot of people are going to be asking because... From what I read, a lot of people were saying it's not, you can't do it, you can't do it, da da da, da. but <clears throat> me and a buddy uh, were up to like 2 or 3 in the morning last night wiring these gauges up and this digital gauge works fine. So yeah, we'll go over that um, at a later time. We might briefly go over it today, but uh, yeah, so it looks like the rain's going to hold off and we should get a decent amount of work done on the truck, but I will uh, see you guys in a minute when we start working on it. Okay, so <clears throat> here's our RPM gauge. Um, I bought this on Amazon. It wasn't crazy expensive. Um, I'll go through how we wired it up, but I know it was the gray, there was a gray wire, was the signal wire to the PCM for the TAC. And then I believe there was a black wire that we cut and it was um, key on power and that's all we needed to run the gauge. So there's four wires, four or five wires on the plug and we only used, we cut and used two of them. Um, I'll go ahead and start the truck and And then we also got our glow shift 3-in-1 gauge in. Um, I didn't have a sp specific reason why I went with glow shift. They're just kind of cheap and didn't really... I don't really care for, you know, uh, I don't need fancy gauges. Just something that reads. So uh, glow shift was good for that. Plus they have a warranty so if it does break I can just send them back in. Um, so yeah, that this is a glow shift gauge. This is a hot system is the brand. Um, and then we have a fuel pressure gauge that we haven't put in yet because it just came in today. And the f fuel pressure gauge is also um, glow shift and we're gonna put that right here. Um, I really don't like how I, this is mounted, but that's kind of just how we had to mount it for now because of how big the tack or the gauge is. It's, it's a, like a little bigger than most gauges. So uh, until I make up a bracket for this whole piece up here, that's just how it's going to be mounted. It's just stuck, so I didn't drill any holes or anything. It's just 3M taped up. But uh, yeah, it has trans temp, EGTs, and then boost. It's a 60-pound gauge, so yeah, I mean, I, I like it. We were up to like 3 in the morning wiring it up, um, me and a buddy, so... And he had already installed one of these before, so he kind of knew what he was doing already. So, but yeah, that's that's the gauge. What is up, guys? It is the next day, and we have some bad news. Last night we got a little rowdy, and uh, the transmission is toast. <laughs> So, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and start it and just let you guys tell me if you think it's toast. Just
it's safe to say that it's uh it's probably done so so your next question might be what are you gonna do you just got the thing done and the transmission is broken the answer is lock up we're going to uh, pick up a 47 RH core and I'm thinking that me and a buddy are gonna try to rebuild the trans ourselves um, it's something I wouldn't mind learning and it'd be a cool learning process and I think a 47 RH is a good transmission to learn on I guess so I'm gonna pick up a core whether we rebuild it or not we're gonna swap it into this um, I haven't decided if I'm just gonna throw a converter in this for now until the 47 is done or if I'm just gonna knock out the bodywork while it's down because of the trans. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm not gonna take the transmission out of the truck until I get back from vacation, which is in like 15 days. So when we get back from vacation, I'm gonna tear it out and address the damage. It sounds like a torque converter, and it shifts and dries fine. Well, now it barely moves, but it'll go into gear fine, shift through the gears fine, but as soon as you came up on boost, it would just slip or free rev or whatever you want to call it. But definitely, definitely toast. Never got hot, anything like that. I just think <clears throat> with the modifications we've done the transmission just can't hold it and I mean that makes sense these trucks only came with like 180 horsepower from the factory so <clears throat> um, but yeah but for tonight uh, we're doing some side work that hopefully we're gonna knock out tonight maybe finish it up in the morning and then get this thing pulled back into the garage and uh, start knocking out some of the body work <laughs> I want to throw the other hood on it, um, get it, get the other hood sanded down and primered, throw it on, start sanding down and primering the rest of the truck, maybe try to mess with the rockers some, but um, I can't do any of that until I get this side job done, so we're going to try to knock that out and hopefully we can get some content going up on this. Um, I'll make a video. Um, maybe sometime this week or next weekend on the RPM gauge because I know a lot of people are going to be asking about that but yeah that's pretty much it for now sadly I'm just as sad trust me I had fun with it for like a night and then it just messed up oh we did fix our charging issue it ended up being the alternator which is fine I'm just not the type of person to just throw parts at something. Um, I like to diagnose until I know for a fact that it's going to be the part that I'm throwing at it. So, I mean, there's no reason to spend money that you don't need to spend unless you know you need to spend it. So, but yeah, guys, that'd be it for now. Sadly, this is the thing we're doing site work on. More junk. Why do we always get stuck with the forts? I don't. I don't. Why do you have a factory wheel on your car, you may ask. Ohio Roads is the answer. I cracked a wheel. I was pretty upset about it. Just on a holiday weekend, he came in just to weld it for me. I'll uh, link the picture of what it looked like before. In, in here, but uh, you can tell somebody that tried to fix it before or something. Yeah, that looks way, way better. But you could tell someone tried to fix it before and uh, they had just fixed the outside and they, anytime you get a crack, that you weld like on a wheel you're supposed to cut the crack like cut it with a, a grinder and so that it's a clean break 
and then from there you weld in you know you weld over it well whoever fixed it before just welded over the dirty crack and obviously it didn't hold and on top of that they just welded the outside of the wheel which I have an idea that they probably didn't dismount the tire so they just welded the outside and I really hope that's not the case because that would just be really stupid but there are lots of stupid people out there and that wouldn't surprise me but we get to work on this piece of junk and we get to see what's wrong with this thing.